I'm pretty sure that everyone across the entire world thinks that 2024 is going to be a crazy year. But what's in store for silver? Is this the year that silver quote unquote explodes? If it ever were going to happen, 2024 does make a lot of sense. But silver's price doesn't make sense, so we can't say for sure. But I do know one thing for sure, silver's true value ain't going nowhere. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, the channel that brings you silver videos every single day of the week. So make sure you subscribe. Definitely click the bell so you immediately get notified anytime anything happens across the world. I truly am your one stop shop. Is silver a solid investment option going ahead in 2024? It's a great question. But I want to take this question a step further and pass it off to you. What do you think silver's price will be on December 27th, 2024, since that is what today's date is, December 27th? There is a lot that's going to be happening. And like I said in the introduction, yes, this could, I mean, it makes sense that silver could explode, but silver's price in general doesn't make sense. So you have to Think about that and incorporate all of the unknown variables which lie ahead, like the results are of the war, who else enters it, how much money we're spending, also who wins the 2024 election. We could go into inflation and the Federal Reserve, and th there's a lot. So anyone who tries to say this is what silver's price is going to be, take that with a grain of salt. So I also wanted to mention that I have some incredible silver deals for you, so let's show those right now. You, my friend, are in luck because you have a chance to purchase American Eagles, only $4.99 over spot, and Constitutional Silver, aka Junk Silver, only $3 over spot. We also have tons of different 10 ounce bars, $2.45 over spot, plus more. Slayer at milesfranklin.com if you guys want to take advantage of those deals. So, is silver a solid investment option going ahead in 2024? In the world of precious metals, gold is long reign supreme. And this is a good point. Gold has reigned supreme for a while, even currently, with the gold to silver ratio sitting around 80 to 1, gold is at all-time highs, $2,000, we're talking about silver, not even half of its all-time high. Silver always follows behind gold, yes, it might lag a little bit, but it always does, and since gold already exploded and took off, silver's turn is next up, and it hasn't happened yet. Especially considering the gold to silver ratio around 80 to 1, the ratio has to normalize. So with silver being undervalued, given or, or considering the gold to silver ratio, and gold overvalued, considering the gold to silver ratio, not saying that $2,000 gold is overvalued, just silver's next up. So you would want to go with the one that hasn't already exploded. When the gold to silver ratio is going higher, that means the gold is outperforming silver. When it's going lower, that means that silver is outperforming gold. The ratio needs to go lower, meaning that silver is going to outperform gold. So however we approach 2024, you might want to turn your gaze to silver, a commodity that, despite its 2023 volatility, may hold promising prospects. A turbulent 2023 setting the stage for silver. And I just wanted to branch off of what I just said as well. Um, gold is still a great investment. Gold is a very, a very, very good way to store your wealth. Not saying that you shouldn't invest in the gold. I think you should invest in both. But just given from a investor's perspective, silver would be the one that is going to perform better. And that's just a fact, given the circumstances or at least from the gold to silver ratio. So as of December 2023, the price of silver stood at $24.38 per ounce, or $783 per kilo. For Aussie investors, this converts to $36.05 per ounce, or $1,158 per 
kilogram. The hike in price marks more than 5% increase from the previous year and a 3.5% increase from the, pre uh, the previous month. This upward trend signifies a recovery from earlier fluctuations within the year. But let's look into these so-called fluctuations. Factors adding to silver's price volatility. The main factor is silver is a much smaller market than gold. Much smaller market. That's why it's also uh, the one that's most mostly manipulated. It's a lot easier to manipulate. So now you think prices wouldn't skyrocket, right? And this is adding to the volatility. Imagine this. There are a lot of people wanting silver. There's a lot more people wanting silver than there is silver being dug up and produced. There's a lot of demand, not as much supply. We're talking about a 20% gap between what's needed and what's available. Now, you'd think prices would skyrocket, right? But there's a twist. It didn't go up as much as you expect. That is exactly what I said in the introduction. Silver should, quote unquote, skyrocket. Like I mentioned, it makes a lot of sense. But guess what? Silver's price doesn't make sense. This is exactly what I was saying. They just said it in a different way. Part of the reason is that all the paper silver contracts in the market, they're like promises of silver without the actual silver being there, which can skew things. That is exactly correct. COMEX is a facade. It's corrupt. A lot of people think their silver is sitting in a vault somewhere, but it's not. It says it is, but it's not there. If everyone tried to turn in those contracts to physical delivery, it would expose the silver Corruption, it would expose the manipulation, it would expose this price suppression, and things would, uh, silver's true value would show at least. They're saying uh, up to 200 plus people own silver that think they do, but they don't, meaning that every ounce of physical silver you hold in your hand, 200 other people around the world think that same ounce is theirs, but it's not. Because, like I say, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. So silver is in a shortage, and there is a notable drawdown in the available physical stocks held in London, uh, or held in New York and London's physical hubs, more so than seen in gold, said Nikki Shields, head of metals strategy at Precious Metals Company, uh, uh, MKS Pamp, to CNBC. There's, then there's the whole global drama scene, and the U.S. is playing it tight with these money policies and tensions between Russia and Ukraine was added into the mix. These big picture issues have a sneaky way of shaking up the precious metal world, silver included. Also, the market's been trying to guess what's going to happen with the U.S. interest rates and the dollar, and that's been causing some ups and downs too. And don't forget, silver is not just for hoarding or jewelry. It's got industrial uses. So these demands shift around and add to the whole roller coaster. I like how they mention all these different points, but the main point is silver is money itself. Silver isn't just your regular shiny metal. It's got a double life, sort of like a superhero in the world of metals. Exactly. I call it the best of both worlds. According to Rush, an Australian fintech metals investment platform, silver possesses several benefits to act as a sustainable and solid investment option. Co-founder and director of Rush, Mark uh, or, or co-founder and director of Rushmark, said silver offers a secure real-world alternative for those looking to diversify their investment portfolios and seize opportunities for the coming decades. Silver as a finite and precious metal serves multiple vital purposes in various industries, often being consumed upon usage. Its limited supply and modest trading volumes make it appealing as a promising investment. And this is a very good point right here often being consumed upon usage and never to be recycled, like gold is. Almost all gold is recycled, re-scrapped, reused for more coins, bars, and jewelry. But silver, since it's used in industries, thrown away. It's not recycled as much as gold is. If an ounce of gold gets dug up out of the ground, it will stay in circulation for centuries, right? An ounce of silver gets dug up, it's thrown away within a couple of decades. And that's why I was saying the gold to silver ratio sitting at 16 to 1, I could argue is a lot lower because when you consider that silver is thrown away plus silver is a byproduct, yes, it comes out of the ground 8 to 1, but given the other factors, it's a lot lower than that. And then according to Rush, silver offers several benefits. Solar industry growth, silver demand in the solar industry skyrocketing. 
By 2027, over 20% of the world's annual silver supply is needed. By 2050, 85 to 98 percent of the annual supplies required and that's just in solar key role vital for renewable technologies growth wide industrial use and i bet they don't even incorporate military which is a huge role so then you can go into evs then you go into industrial use extensively in medical and technology fields you have colloidal silver uh, increasingly important in solar and automotive industries EV solar panels, batteries, uh, uh, sustainable product development. Then you can go into fossil fuels, boost reliance on EVs. Uh, EV demand drives silver need. Global sales nearly doubled from 2021 to 2022. Silver supply in 2022, over a billion ounces. Demand, uh, 1.24 billion ounces. Imbalance, demand outpaces supply. I don't know where they got supply was over a billion ounces, I guess, including recycling and so, uh, of sorts, because production or dug up out of the Earth's crust is around 800 million ounces, 850 on a good year, but we're hundreds of millions of ounces in the red. Uh, so demand breakdown, industries 44%, including electronics, solar PV, and that's 5% in 2022, physical investment 26%, that's up 20% in 2022. Uh, jewelry and silverware is up 26%, up to 38% in 2022. So we believe its pivotal role in sustainable manufacturing, coupled with the expansion of renewable technologies such as solar, EVs, large-scale batteries, industrial medical applications, uh, position silver as an undervalued asset today. They didn't even include military. And guess what? Even the Silver Institute's numbers for total global or, or annual demand doesn't include military either or things like, uh, like um, uh, space. We're talking about rockets. We're talking about, um, we're we're talking about uh, what are some others? They, they use it for satellites. We use it for space equipment. All of these other things. There's 500 ounces of silver in a single Tomahawk missile. And that, that monster box, that Tomahawk missile, that 500 ounces that gets dropped, is that, that silver is obliterated. It's never going to be recycled. Uh, and it's, in, it's insane that they don't incorporate military in these numbers, in the data. So, yes, we, we're talking about 1.21 billion ounces. They're predicting up to 1.4 billion ounces this year in demand. But it's a lot more than that since they don't incorporate a lot of uh, critical other roles that silver plays. And then you could go into how the U.S. military rated our stockpiles, our silver stockpiles, and that's because we need silver for missiles and uh, tanks and, uh, and satellites for, you know, a lot of different reasons. And if we don't have enough silver to make these missiles and, and all this stuff to win wars, then you could see how important of a role silver plays and why U.S. military will raid our stockpiles. War is the most important. They don't care about some EVs. They need these missiles. They need all of this stuff in the military sector, so it makes a lot of sense. Silver linings, question mark. Experts remain optimistic, predicting a high of $30 per ounce. For instance, analysts at Citigroup assert that the recent dip in silver prices this year offers a strong dip buying opportunity. They reiterate their forecast of silver reaching $30 an ounce in the next 6 to 12 months. So I think if silver breaks above $30, we would probably see $35 possibly $40 shortly after. And if that were to happen, we would probably see $50. And if that were to happen, if it would break above that $50 resistance level, we'd probably see $100. Not saying this will happen, but if silver does break above that very strong $30 resistance level, then it would head towards the very, very, very strong $50 resistance level. The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Especially if, you know, the COMEX corruption gets exposed or, uh, or if things turn very bad for the uh, supply deficits and all of these different sectors that need silver that there's just not enough of. Uh, there's so many different 
area uh, angles you could play into this and then not even talking about the u.s dollar and, and the risk of it this de-dollarization or the usd at the world's reserve currency on this global platform with the BRICS nations there's just a lot a lot going for silver but mainly you should invest into it because it is real money it's security you're taking control of your wealth and not leaving it at the mercy of uh, of the federal reserve so yeah anyways i'm gonna wrap this video up here let me know remember the questions i asked in the beginning what do you think silver's price will be on december 27th 2024 exactly a year from today and explain why i'd love to hear your thoughts anyways thank you so much for tuning in this was silver slayer i'll see you guys later today actually peace <laughs>